You can turn a hoe into a housewife. You can. But the question is, would you want to? Today I'm going to discuss that. And um, I want to basically make a little personal point um, for red pill guys. Uh, you know, I had to learn these things, particularly the things I'm going to talk about today. You know, I had to learn a lot of these things the hard way. Um, particularly when, you, when it comes to the hoes and trying to turn them into housewives. <laughs> because what I did, unfortunately, was I went out and I sought, sought after hoes. Now, I guess, you know, in this PC culture generation, and particularly this, the, you know, the generation that we live in when everybody's sexual. I mean, if it was like 1940s, 1950s, right? You know, you would have some leeway to say, you know, oh, I want a girl that's not been, you know, tainted with a bunch of sex. Like, you could maybe get that. You could probably get that back then. In today's day and age, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. I think you could get one with a low count, a low body count, potentially, if you, if you got her at a young enough age and just the stars aligned and you got lucky and she wasn't hypergamous and she wanted to be with you and she loved you, like, maybe. I think there are guys out there that get lucky like that. But, you know, in today's day and age, even the women who are, you know, well-dressed, come from good homes, right? And, and, and when I say women, I mean young women, you know, between the ages of 20 to 35. After that, I don't even know after that. <laughs> like, they're, they're pretty much off the market after that, you know, it's, ugh, what the fuck? You know, after, after age 35, like, you know, her stock, her sexual market value plummets. <laughs> her marriage market value, her stock, plummets into oblivion um you know they hit the wall it is what it is particularly if they don't take care of themselves some people you know take care of themselves with stress no good food etc anyway i don't want to go off on a tangent but women from age 20 to 35 even if they're come from a good home even if they come even if they have nice background well-dressed, well-spoken, clean. Believe it or not, being clean is, a, is an important thing. It really is. Do you, do you clean your room? Do you clean your house? Is your house dirty? How, do, you, do you vacuum, you know, every couple days? You know, is your house dusty? And those things matter. Maybe not as much, you know, when it comes to love, love can overlook a lot of things. You know, I, I've, I've read... So, you know, I've read some decent books on love, and if you really love somebody, you, you close your eyes to a lot of shitty things. It depends on what it is, though. You don't close your eyes to cheating. You don't close your eyes to, you know, certain behaviors that are basically inexcusable. And I'm, I'm going to get into some of those behaviors in a minute here. Um, but, you know, girls that have quality background, and they're out there. These girls are sleeping around. It's everybody. Sex is sex is great. Feels good. It's fun. Orgasms are awesome. Like we all love sex. We I, I would even venture to say we worship sex in Western culture. But I was having this conversation earlier today. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because I want to give a message to you guys and I want to say we need to have a higher standard. Red pill guys have to have a higher standard. And we need to we need to educate and teach the youth, not just by our words, but by example as well. Um, pick the right woman, okay? Pick the right woman. Be with the right woman. And I was having a conversation with these guys earlier today, these pickup artist guys. I'm in this group and I talk to these guys and, you know, basically your, your, your basic PUA guys, right? Of course, the guys that I'm talking to are the new generation, not the old generation from like 2000 to 2010, not the Rolo Tomasi generation or his era. I mean, he's 
he's all over the place. He, he, he. Rolo Tomasi mixes red pill with Pua, and I've already made my video on that, but how I don't like that. But there was a gen there, there was a beginning Pua generation, like the Mystery Method and uh, Neil Strauss generation. That's from like 2000 to like 2010. And then I would say, in my opinion, from 2010 to 2020, in my opinion, it was mostly like the RSD generation, Real Social Dynamics, you know, Tyler Cook, Owen Cook, whatever, um, and all the RSD guys. And then, of course, um, you have just all kinds of these splinter groups, all kinds of these little companies and shooting up out of nowhere and alpha male strategies and ultimate, ultimate man project and woo, woo, all these offshoots and Elliot Hulse and woo, like all these guys with their opinions. And this is how you do, this is how you treat women. Uh, you know, they read their books and they read their philosophy and then they dump it off onto you and they want you to pay them. Right. Anyway, right, so I'm talking to these guys, like that 2010 to 2020 generation, younger guys in their 20s, because, you know, the guys from 2000 to 2010, they're all married now. They all got long-term girlfriends, married, most of them, right? The 2010, 2020 guys, some of the, even some of the RSC guys, I think Julian is married. Well, he, he might be the only one, but anyway, um, so these guys are young guys, so I'm talking to these guys, and you know, I'm talking to them about love and, and they're all, they're all kinds of warped. They're all kinds of warped in their head. They don't know what love is. They don't know what loyalty is. In fact, they're, they're so warped and degraded in their thinking that they even think that they even think non-monogamy is okay. Like it's, you know, they have all their like theories, like, and, and they probably read them like, you know, warrior poet king lover whatever that book is um the way of the ultimate or, or, or the way of the superior man right all these books right all you know maybe even rational male to some extent all these books with, with all this philosophy on biological science and mating strategies and this that ooh, ooh, ooh. And, and a lot of it is true a lot of it is true you know a lot of it is true um particularly in in a degraded society particularly in a society that casts off morals casts off restraint right casts off you know uh values traditional values particularly traditional values and to me i would say all these books and all these offshoots and these things like that even pool etc to some extent most of this stuff to in my opinion from my learning and from my experience has been started with second wave feminism i could you could trace it all back to second wave feminism now of course men have always wanted to have pussy their whole lives men have always wanted to you know since the beginning of time we've wanted to have sex and we don't give a fuck many of us don't give a fuck about fornication but i'm kind of talking we should give a fuck about fornication we should care right and every once in a while, you'll hear somebody say it. You'll hear somebody say, fuck these poor guys. All, all, all they're doing is ruining these young women for their future relationships. And to some extent, I think that's true. I'm not going to sit here and be a white knight. I'm not going to sit here and be a simp. But if you're looking at it from a moralistic viewpoint, and I am moral, I am for morals. Sorry to say, many people... You know, talk, 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 talk about morality is subjective and whoop de woo woo about there's no morals and do what you can, blah, 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 all this. Even, even Jordan Peterson, even Jordan Peterson talks about how men should be wild and brutish and like sh men should be sought after by many women, but only should choose one. And like, oh, this ideal, you know, this ideal ubermensch ultimate man that, that Jordan, you know, Jordan Peterson's influenced by Nietzsche. He's influenced by Freud. He's influenced by a lot of people who don't have morals, who don't look at the world from a moralistic viewpoint. And even I would say to some extent, Jordan Peterson um, is influenced by morals. He is influenced by traditional values. And I think he has a conscience, which is contradictory to a lot of the stuff that he talks about, which is why I think as a man... Uh, Jordan Peterson is somebody who has, has a sort of contradictory spirit, has a sort of contradictory mind where he, he feels like the right thing to do is to be traditional. He feels like the right thing to do to be, to do is to be moral. However, in this, you know, degenerate society that we live in, this, this, this selfish, 
you know, animalistic human life that we that we live in that's often so materialistic and many things that biologically are motivated through materialism such as the female need in nature to be protected which is why you want you know why they seek after guys with money right um that can influence so that has influenced somebody like jordan peterson right but all these guys they're all they're all all these schools of thought, all these schools of philosophy, they kind of interconnect. You know, if you had a, I don't know, flow chart is the right word, but if you had a, a chalkboard or a marker board and you had all these bubbles and you had like feminism, second wave feminism, you know, the way of the superior man, rational male, Jordan Peterson school of thought, Freud school of thought, um, Nietzsche school of thought, all these schools of thought, you could connect them in certain ways. You could draw parallels. You could draw arrows that would connect. They overlap. A lot of these theories overlap and coincide. And a lot of these theories are built on observation. And indeed, I have my own observations. And I would say, I would agree. A lot of these things are true. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just because something's true and observable doesn't necessarily make it right doesn't necessarily mean that's the best way to go and this is what a lot and like i said i was talking with these young guys and this is what a lot of these young guys don't understand because they don't have a moralistic viewpoint and because they say things like well morality is subjective they have no anchor there's no anchor there's nothing for them to anchor their boat onto so to speak their their boat of the, their philosophical boat their mind you know the way our mind conceptualizes our reality and we and we see and we observe and through those through those seeings and observations we piece together what reality is but here's the thing if you don't have an anchor if you don't have a moralistic anchor you probably think abnormality is is normal you probably think things that are abnormal are normal so this is what so like i said i'm having a conversation with these young guys and they don't believe in love they don't believe in monogamy they think that just because you you're horny and just because you you know you want to fuck a lot of girls they think that's the way it should be like Here's what a lot of people don't understand. Here's what a lot of these guys don't understand. We're tainted. Our body is tainted. Now this is this gets into a biblical belief. This gets, this gets into a spiritual belief. Our body is tainted by sin. Our body is tainted by the fall. The fall, what is the fall? The fall was when Adam and Eve in the garden disobeyed God and they ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. That's the fall, simplified. That's what it is. Happened in Genesis chapter three. Go read the book of Genesis chapter three. The book of Genesis is a historical, um, it's a historical book. And it historically talks about the fall of man and the subsequent steps the subs the the, the 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 subsequent decline after um what adam and eve did in genesis chapter 3 there are these subsequent declining steps in the book of genesis that show the the way man declined and fell away from God. What is the decline away from? The decline is away from God, right? What is God? God is source, God is love, God is everything we need, protection, light, love, etc. This is what God put Adam and Eve in the garden for, to rely on God, right? People don't realize this fundamental fact that man is supposed to rely on God. But what the devil did, and of course, people will argue and say, well, why did God put the devil in the garden in the first place? Well, he had to, because if he didn't, man wouldn't have free will. There had to be that choice. It's all part of God's plan. I struggle with that fact. M many years, I struggle with that fact. It's a sad fact. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard truth to swallow that God was the one who put Satan in the garden of Eden and he allowed it in order to give man free will but there had to be that choice man had to have that choice now would I have done it differently 100% absolutely I would have done it differently I'm not God I'm not as wise as him but I would have done it differently I would have not put a snake in a baby's crib sorry to say I wouldn't have that's me okay 
Maybe God's wiser than me. Maybe he knows some things that I don't know. Maybe when my life is over and, and when I see him, he'll explain these things to me in a, in a detailed way that I can understand them. But for now, all we have is the Bible, right? So, and then of course, the, you know, the many great theologians who came and, um, you know, expanded, expounded upon the Bible and broke it down in, in a way that we all can understand. And I've read a lot of that stuff. And so a lot of what I have is a lot of my knowledge that I have is from those guys and from the Bible itself. Anyway, the subsequent fall. So what happened at that fall? Satan got intermixed and intermingled in our flesh, right? This is all in the Bible, right? Now you can say the Bible is a fairy tale, whoop -de -woo -woo -de -woo, but let's look at it from an objective viewpoint. If indeed Satan got into our flesh and we are corrupted in, in our flesh, wouldn't it make sense that, yeah, like we want to do something that's not right. We want to do stuff that's, that's not righteous. Now, how do we know that having random sex is not righteous? How do we know that that's not a good thing? Well, it's just, you know, like the Bible says, um, you'll know a tree by its fruit. What does that mean? Well, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a lemon tree is, you know, you know that a lemon comes from a lemon tree because when you taste it, it's lemon. Okay. That's, you know, that's a lemon tree. Oh, we know that an apple comes from an apple tree. Why? Because when we taste it, we know that's an apple. So a tree is recognized by its fruit, right? What does that mean? That means that whatever, um, you know, whatever the fruit is, you can make a good assumption about the source, right? If we eat a lemon, we know that it comes from a lemon tree. If we eat an apple, we know that it comes from an apple tree. So we can say, hey, that's an apple tree. Hey, that's a lemon tree. So what's what about sex? What about the sex tree? Well, what happens when we fornicate? What happens when we have a bunch of loose sex? What happens? STDs, is that a good thing? I don't think so. I think that's a negative thing, right? So there's one negative unwanted pregnancies is that a good thing i don't think so i think that's a negative thing there's two negative things broken hearts right broken hearts come when you have a bunch of loose sex men and women both get their hearts broken is that a good thing i don't think so there's three negative things what else all kinds of stuff danger drugs <laughs> i mean sorry but these are facts right a lot of negative comes from fornication. A lot of negative comes from sleeping around. And this is what these pe these kids don't understand. So when I say, hey, it's good to find love. It's a safeguard. Safeguard. S-A-F-E-G-U-A-R-D. Safeguard. Okay. Love is a safeguard. Look up that word. What's that mean? Safeguard means it guards you from negative things. Why? Well, we have necessities. We need to be intimate. We need love. We need physicality. We need sex. And we need help in life. Those are all the things that husband and wife are supposed to do for each other. Right? But what is sex? Sex is just one part of that. So you just take out the sex part of that and you don't have any of the other stuff. So you're taking the pleasure part out of it without the commitment, without the love, without the, um, you know, the help, the intimacy, right? You just take the sex part out of it. Now, I'm just as corrupt as anybody else. I'm, I'm no better. So I'm not going to sit here and preach and say, I'm, 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 I'm different. Uh, no, I'm corrupt as hell. You know, I've, and, and the reason why I'm able to speak on these things is because I've had all these experiences. I've done all these things. I've fornicated. I've messed around with the wrong type of women, slutty women, right? And I've got all the negatives, right? So when I'm talking to these kids and I say things like that, they don't, it doesn't register. There's nothing to register. It's because they don't have an anchor, right? So this is something that we have to have as red pill men. We have to understand and, and many do because I, I read your guys stuff online. You guys are wise. You guys are woke. You guys are red pilled. Doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean you're super moral. Doesn't mean you follow the Bible. And like the reason why I give these examples of the Bible is not because I'm saying go read the Bible and go be a Christian. I mean, it'd be nice if you would, but I'm just giving a perspective. I'm giving a moral um, anchor, a moral perspective, which is what a lot of people don't have because you don't have that moral perspective. 
you tend to put people like me into a box and say, oh, you guys are just religious and that's warped your way of thinking, whoop de woo woo right? But, but again, I would have to point to the negatives. I would have to say the negatives. I would have to say, well, what the hell are the negatives of, of being animalistic? Oh, you, you know, we're all just mammals. We all want to go out and have sex. We, like, yeah, we do. But again, if, if my theory is that it's from the fall and your theory is that that's a good thing, then what about all those negatives from it, right? What about all those negatives? So again, you can tell a tree by its fruit. If something has negative fruit, then you can tell it's not a good tree. So your theory that, oh, it's okay to go have sex, it's okay to just be loose and this, that, and the third, right? It's okay, that's your theory, because we're all just animals and it's all just part of our biology, that's your theory. What about all the negatives, right? Now, what about this? What about all the positives of, of the other thing, getting married, being monogamous, being loyal, being loving to your, to your spouse? There's not a lot of negatives there. Okay, some of the negatives that, that, that they said in our conversation were, oh, the sex gets boring. Okay, you're probably right. It probably does get boring. But what else do you have besides that? You've got love, you got intimacy. Again, you got a safeguard. You got somebody who's helping you in life. You got a companion. You got somebody who, who loves you more than anybody else, who wants to be with you more than anybody else, who's not gonna lie about you behind your back probably not going to cheat on you hopefully and if they do then they're not a very good spouse sorry to say um again so you got all that so okay maybe the sex is boring after five years all right but it's probably still good enough to have sex every day and if it's not then i don't know that's unfortunate but hey as it uh, you know i've been a single guy for 98% of my life, 95% of my life, I've been a single guy. Um, it's not all it's cracked up to be. People act like, you know, we're, we're out here living like Dan Balzerian. We're out here living like Leonardo DiCaprio, banging 20 year olds on a yacht. No, no, we're not. <laughs> we are not. Single guys are not doing that. We will be lucky if we get our dick touched, you know, what? once every six months <laughs> and people are like oh i i, I got sex once a month well okay even once a month wow once a month you get a new girl probably not even that great like okay let's say let's say she is let's say you get a hot one hot girl every month that's 12 sexual experiences a year maybe you're more lucky than that and you get it more regularly whatever whatever but again even if that happens even if it's great even if you get a new hot girl every day and it's amazing you lack the love, you lack the intimacy, you lack the bond, you lack that loyalty, you lack that help, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot going on there. Um, now, with that said, what's my point? My point is we need to teach these things as red pill men. We need to spread these kind of this kind of awareness and this kind of truth on the one hand, okay? On the other hand, why do you want to, why would you want to settle down with a hoe? You can turn a hoe into a housewife. You really can. The question is, would you want to? Would you want to? That's the question. Um, and I would say no. Because here, here's what I always say. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because the topic of, of earlier today, which is what these guys were talking about, was... There was this guy who was, who was a pickup artist and he got married and he got married recently, but he was with a girl that he got married to for about 10 years. So while he was dating her for 10 years, he was out carousing around with other women because he's a pool. He's a pickup artist. He's a professional pickup artist. He sells products for pickup artistry, which is, which is, you know, anybody who's successful, we would think that's respectable, blah, blah, blah. But here's, here, here's what I don't think is respectable. You have a girlfriend, long-term girlfriend, and you're cheating on her because it's your job. Let's just say, even if it's your job, even if you're just not doing it because you want to do it, let's say it's your job. Is that still respectable? Not to me. It's not respectable on his part. And as I get older, I tweak it. And I don't look at him. When I was younger, I used to look at how I used to think, oh, what a piece of shit. This guy cheats on his girlfriend. I look at it like this. What kind of girl, now that I'm older, I mean, yeah, there's that. But I look at it, you know, on the flip side. What kind of girl, and this is how I look at it on the flip side. What kind of girl 
is going to stick with a guy who cheats on her. That's a weird thing. And it's like, I judge her almost more than him. Like a guy who's doing that, like, okay, well, he's a, he's a fuck boy, whatever. He's a player. He's a piece of shit. Like you, you, I, I, I don't respect that. At least in so far as like, I don't respect it in so far as if he claims he loves her, or he, he, he claims he's, you know, oh, you know, I love my girl, but then why are you cheating on her? And it's the same with a girl. It's the same with a girl. Oh, you love your guy? Why are you cheating on your guy? Why are you cheating on him if you love him? Like, oh, it's just sex. And that's how people today think. They think like, oh, it's just sex. It's, not, it's, not, it's no biggie. Don't kid yourself. That's a big thing. You're breaking the intimacy bond. You're breaking the loyal bond. But because I'm talking to these guys, right, I understand that the, the young people of today... They don't have the same kind of thinking. They don't have that same kind of moral foundation, that same kind of moral anchor. They don't care. Oh, well, it's just sex. You know, we're, we're all animals, you know. I used to think like you, but I, I evolved into it. I look at it differently now. Like, sex is just sex, and it's like, it's just something that we need. It's like, nah, man, you're breaking a heart bond. And, 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 and one of the things that I mentioned was I said, there's cheating with your dick, and then there's cheating with your heart. Right now, I would say some people, it's easy for them to cheat with their dick. Like, all right, well, you know, we fucked and that's all it was. And some people, particularly more so women, they cheat with their heart. They cheat with their heart. Well, you know, I, I met this other guy. I really like him. You know, he makes me feel a certain way. Right. This is how women cheat because women are more emotionally based to sex women are more emotionally grounded than men are men are more physical and, and visual but it doesn't mean that we don't have a heart it doesn't mean we don't have emotions towards women it's just we don't need that emotional connection to get into sex but mostly women do so my thing is what kind of what would you want a woman who would be okay with you cheating that's my thing. And even Jordan Peter, even there's a lot of guys today who say like, you know, you're supposed to be a player. Women want you when more when, 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 when other women want you. And like, that's true. Yes. But would you really want those women? <laughs> because those women to me are hoes. Like, I don't know if I'd want a woman who's more attracted to me, the more women I sleep with. I don't think I'd want a woman like that raising my kids. And that's my ultimate point about all this is what kind of woman do you want raising your kids? What kind of woman do you want having your back for the next 50, 60 years of your life? You know, do you really want to grow old with a, with a hoe? Do you really want to grow old with a woman who has bad character? Do you really want to grow old with a woman who was a loose slut for the first 20 years of her life? Or the first 20 years of her adult life, I should say. Like, she, you know, by the time she turned 16, 17, she was sleeping around, you know, until she hit 30 or 35, and then she married you. And it's like, do you really want that? Like, that's, that's, you can turn a hoe into a housewife. You can turn that woman into a housewife. You can. You really can. You could do it. And, but, but my question is, can she really love you? My question is, she might say she loves you. And then, of course, I would always revert back to hypergamy. Can a woman really love a man at all, ever? Really? If she's hypergamous, can she really ever do it? If she, all she's going after is money? Oh, you got a, you got a nice house. You pay a mortgage, right? You, you pay your light bill. You got your car bill, right? You got a two-car garage. You got a career, good job. That's what attracts her. What if you don't have those things? Would you really want to be with a woman like that? Because what if you lose your shit? What if in 10 years you get sick? You go broke. You know, they used to have these marriage vows that would say, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer or poorer. Those three phrases, they don't have that anymore. They took that shit out, man. They don't say that at weddings anymore. Maybe traditional weddings. Maybe some people who are traditionally minded, they want those traditional wedding vows. But I don't think that's common anymore, man. They took that shit out. Because love now is contingent upon your ability to provide. You can't provide what you, what's your worth, right? You can't put food on the table. You can't pay bills. 
you can't pay a mortgage what's your worth what are you doing for her what do you what do you bring into the table right i mean she's bringing sex which is what every guy wants every guy's paying for it in one way or another right and she's giving you that every day she's giving you intimacy okay are you paying bills right but see i argue which i always do that that is that's a fundamentally prostitution type way of looking at relationships that's an exchange of sex and intimacy for resources okay what is that that's not real love right so you can turn a woman like that into a housewife technically like on paper like yeah she'll she'll sign the she'll sign the marriage papers she'll move in with you she might have your kids she might raise some kids with you whatever whatever it, you know she'll probably have kids from previous relationships because nowadays single moms are are more common than, than, than kool-aid single moms are more common than grass um but again is that love man is that real love is that what you really want you really want a hoe <laughs> you really want to try to turn a hoe into a housewife really <laughs> I don't know, man, we all got choices, you know, choose carefully, like, I might, I might rather be alone than that, you know, some people wouldn't, some people don't like it, some people, I need somebody to hug and love, I need somebody to kiss on, I need, like, I guess, man, I guess you need a teddy bear, right, I guess you need a security blanket, somebody to hold on to, but I don't know, I have a higher standard than that, I have a higher standard than, um, you know, I want somebody who's faithful. I want somebody who's loyal. Does that mean I'm, you know, kicking my boots in happiness being single? Hell no. It's lonely as fuck. It sucks. I wanted to find love and I wanted to get married at least 15 years ago. Like, I've been wanting to find love since I was like 15, 16. Right? It's just not, it's not viable, man. Women, women today... It's not like that, man. They don't breed them like that. Women today are raised off of Kesha. They're raised off of Britney Spears. They're raised off of Beyonce. Why do you think Pornhub is so popular? Why do you think all these little girls are doing all doing porn? Because they were raised by MTV. They were raised by sluts. Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey, Jennifer Lopez. They've got one, the devil has one slutty singer for every race they got a black girl they got a, a bunch of white girls got a bunch of black girls they got a bunch of spanish girls all right they're all representatives of the different races see what i'm saying so 